Peekaboo. Peekaboo. <laughs> All right, in this video, I'm a brick wall because I'm going to be talking about infrastructure as code, which is basically brick walls as bricks. That's a bad analogy. I don't know what I'm saying. All right, so if you don't know what infrastructure as code is, it's basically a method where you can type up some code and then it'll automatically like provision resources for you. And it's a really important, um, I guess, tool in your arsenal because it allows you to speed up the deployment time, which in today's kind of like agile arc, like methodology where everyone wants to deploy as quick as possible to get out to the product owners, you want to be able to deploy really quickly. And of course, make sure your infrastructure becomes consistent so that you deploy the same thing every time that you want to deploy something, the same thing. To give you more detail about infrastructure code, I would like to first tell you the story and history of how infrastructure of code came to be. But before I do, make sure to triple click that like button for YouTube algorithm as I put a lot of effort into these kind of videos. Thanks. So long ago in the Stone Ages, <laughs> before, before everyone was born, uh, people were manu manually deploying infrastructure to their hosting environments, wherever that might have been. So of course, manually deploying got tiresome, so they wanted to find a way to speed it up. And how they do that? They wrote scripts that would automatically kind of like deploy whatever infrastructure they would have. And these scripts would sometimes break because sometimes things change. So if something needed to change, they would modify the script that would change the infrastructure. And this would become time consuming because oftentimes new technology would make it so that infrastructure would have to change. And of course, these scripts would have to be rewritten over and over again. And that is where infrastructure as code comes in with DevOps. So it kind of allows you to spin up infrastructure like the same way over and over again. And you have it all written out so you can use Git to make see make and see like when changes actually occurred to the code, that is. So infrastructure as code kind of worked alongside of uh, continuous integration and continuous development and deployment by making sure that once you like write some code for infrastructure, like with CloudFormation, for example, of AWS, it, you can automatically like commit that. And then through like a commit hook, it will automatically be built and then with code build or, and then deployed with like code pipeline, code build, code deploy, with all that kind of stuff. So it'll automatically get out to the people that need it quickly. Now I want to talk about consistency here for a little bit because consistency is really key when, especially when you're looking at the size and the amount of services that you might be using in your application. Because if you're using a lot of services, it might be very difficult to go ahead and try to provision and deploy all those at the same time within like a short period of time that you're trying to deploy things. So for example, if you suddenly have an application, maybe not suddenly, that has like 20 different services, yeah, I guess that wouldn't be suddenly because if you suddenly have that kind of application that has 20 different services, it would probably be with infrastructure as code anyway. But if you have an application that uses 20 different services and you're trying to manually deploy all of them, it might take a decently long time to deploy all those, like especially if like you're doing like multiple EC2 servers on AWS and you need to deploy like each of them like manually and like deploy scripts onto them manually. It might take like hours to do all that just for like 20 different services. But if you're doing it with like CloudFormation templates, then it could be very quickly, like less than like 10 minutes, probably a couple of minutes to provision all of them. Another thing is you might miss some things if you're doing it manually. That's why infrastructure as code is really important. So with infrastructure as code, all you really need to do is write all the code that you need to provision all your services, which might take some setup time, but it really is, it's really important when it gets comes down to it. It's kind of like exercise, you know? People need exercise because, oh, it, like it, it makes them healthy, but people don't like doing it because it's that setup time where you have to do it over and over again. Actually, that's kind of a bad example because you have to do it over and over again. Well, infrastructure as code, you kind of have to write it once and then you can kind of go from there. Although you do have to edit it and upkeep it though. So it's, it's similar to exercise. <laughs> so anyways, all you really need to do is press that shiny red deployment button, maybe not red, but it, it could be red depending on where you're de deploying the infrastructure as code. And what could have been monthly or biannual deployments, because if it was manual, it might take so, so many hours to deploy something. You're not going to want to do that like every week, every day. You want to have to do that like months, every couple months or biannually or every year or something like that. 
So it can be deployments multiple times a day with infrastructure as code, which is really important. So rollback is another key feature of infrastructure as code because you can easily roll back to whatever previous version you had. If you suddenly see that the new version is failing, and this is could be really key as well if you're kind of deploying something real quickly, and then you can deploy something fast and then fail fast. So you can roll back fast and do everything fast. That's another key tip of infrastructure as code. So there's many different ways to set up environments where you can just deploy something with the click of a button and you can deploy repeatable infrastructure. So for example, you can use an easy thing, easiest solution, and that is Elastic Beanstalk. And you might not be typing up like many lines of code just to deploy something with this. And that's what makes it really easy because Elastic Beanstalk, you just basically put your application in there and then you kind of specify what you want to deploy and then boom, it will be deployed right there and everything will just go and work for you. That's how great Elastic Beanstalk is. So if you're just wanting to get something up and running, I would just use that. I wouldn't even care about like file formation unless you're like, you have people dedicated to working on that. So, and then the, comes the higher difficulty of setting up repeatable infrastructures is like I've been mentioning CloudFormation or with Terraform, which uh, has recently uh, became possible to, you can use Terraform with AWS using CDK now, which CDK is Cloud Development Kit, if you did not know. So in other words, you can use serverless or CDK to generate the CloudFormation templates or the Terraform code so that those templates, those CloudFormation templates or the Terraform code will basically tell like AWS what services to deploy for you. So AWS CloudFormation is what I'm most familiar with. And it basically generates stacks. And you can think of these stacks as kind of like individual environments. So you might have a stack for like for production. Oh, my phone's calling one sec. You might have a stack for production. You might have a stack for development and one for QA. And each of these could be very similar, but like they would have very similar like services and like backends, but they're all individually different, but similar at the same time. And that is what people are looking for when they want to use infrastructure as code. If you would like me to go into more detail on like how to set up like CloudFormation templates, um, let me know and maybe I'll make a video about that. I have made a couple of videos using CDK and serverless, so maybe um, I'll put those in the description and you can take a look at those. Anyways, that's the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed it, found it somewhat informative on like infrastructure as code because it's a really powerful tool that is kind of becoming more and more popular nowadays with DevOps. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you have not already. All right, I'll talk to you later. Peace.